Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, imaging an Android phone using uh, basically root privileges and DD. Um, so um, not any any special software, just um, I'm going to be using a Linux computer. Uh, we're going to use um, uh, ADB uh, to be able to access the, um, the Android phone, and then we're going to basically just get root access to the phone and run uh, DD on the phone to copy out an image of the the hard disk. So let's get started. First off, um, I am using Linux. You can set up ADB on um, uh, a Windows environment, um, but I'm going to be doing everything from Linux. So inside, if you go to source.android.com, you can get instructions on how to set up a build environment for Android. And this is the thing you have to do first, um, just to get all of the utilities that you'll need. Um, for example, the developer kit uh, on Ubuntu, on Linux, um, uh, yeah, on Linux, it took very, very little time to install everything. You can usually use Gap app to get for everything in the repository. There's also ADB, but if you just follow these instructions, and I'll give a link below um, uh, for this page, it will get you all of the packages that you need installed to be able to make um, uh, to be able to make a connection. Okay, so once you have um, the software, the Android development software installed, then uh, you can open up a command line. And if you type adb-h, then you should get the, the help uh, menu, and then you know that adb is installed hopefully correctly. Okay, um, two other things that we need, which I'll also provide links to, uh, we need at the beginning is um, uh, two APKs. I'm going to sideload all of the tools that we're going to use, which means that I have the tools downloaded to my computer, and I'm going to load those tools into the phone from my computer, okay? There are ways to install this uh, on the phone directly. If you visit the website using the phone um, or you download a package onto the phone, then you can run it. Um, uh, but I don't want to use the phone or I wanna to try to use the phone as little as possible. Now, the things that we do will modify the suspect device, um, but we just have to be aware of what we're actually modifying. Now, um, two things that we need to download. The first one is called, um, I, I'm using right now this King O root. I've already tried it, um, and it, it it works pretty well. It's very easy to use. The problem with King O root is that um, well, I haven't looked to see if it's actually doing anything uh, nefarious. However, I did run it through antivirus uh, virus total uh, scan real quick, and um, it uh, was flagged because. Most of these, like, for example, Symantec thinks that it's a Trojan, but a lot of this, like it says, is riskware or uh, potentially unsafe because it's allowing root access on the device. Um, so uh, quite a few antivirus companies flagged this as being malicious, um, but a lot more flagged it as either unknown or not malicious. So um, uh, I guess the point, the point here is whenever you're using rooting software, um, unless it's a forensic tool, uh, which in this case, Kingo root is not necessary. It's not built for forensics. It's built for just rooting your device. Um, you have to be careful that it, it could very well be malware. So, um, I'm not endorsing Kingo root. I've used it now once. Um, so just be aware that your root software, um, uh, could potentially be malicious. So make sure that you're testing your software in a, in a test phone like I'm doing now. Um, and then checking your phone afterwards and seeing if there were any, any strange remnants or like what did it change, what did it not change, that kind of thing. So um, yeah, I'm using Kingo Root. I'm a little bit leery about it. Um, it's also apparently <laughs> developed in Beijing, so I don't know if that means anything. Um, so I'm not saying that this is the right uh, rooting software to use. Use any software that gives you root access. It doesn't have to be Kingo Root. Um, just whatever you're comfortable using, basically. Uh, the next thing, which I've also checked, was, is BusyBox APK. And um, I downloaded the BusyBox APK from appsapk.com, BusyBox app, which I'll also put a link to. Uh, this basically just gives, uh, you can say, more, more Linux tools onto your phone. Okay, now to install BusyBox APK, you have to have rooted your phone already. You need root access to the phone. Um, luckily, we can we can probably um, 
yeah okay well we can get access to it hopefully it works because our especially because our operating system is a little bit older um, the next thing you need to know is your phone you have to have a phone that you're actually going to work with and you need to know the version history so another thing um, check the version number uh, the version of Android that I have on this phone um, that I'm testing on is 4.4.2. So KitKat 4.4.2, it's basically from 2013. Um, and uh, yeah, basically you need to make sure that your routing software supports uh, whatever version you have. So you need to know what, what version of the phone you're, you're dealing with, if you can find that information. And... Um, uh, yeah, just rooting software that will work with it. BusyBox uh, should work uh, in any basically newer version of uh, Android. Okay, so here I have already uh, I've already installed um, ADB to access the phone, and I have uh, BusyBox APK downloaded and Kingo root APK uh, downloaded, and I'm inside. Um, this test directory with these APKs inside. Okay, so now we need to start uh, dealing with the phone. Um, right, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to plug the phone into my computer and I'm going to run ADB devices, ADB devices. And what you should see is a device attached. Um, and this is uh, an identifier that I would not be posting this identifier online if it was actually my phone, but this is a test phone that will never be used, so um, it's okay. Uh, I have this list of devices, so I see the device attached, okay? So now we have the device. So ADB devices, if it's not showing up, or if it shows that it's not authenticated, then you might have to uh, log into the, or yeah, basically log into the phone, if you can, and um, uh uh, give access to the computer. So once you specify that this computer can have access, then the device should show up as um, device instead of unauthenticated. Okay, so once we have access to the device, or once we see it in our lists of devices, um, I have in this directory, again, Kingo root and BusyBox APK. So what I want to do is install or push this APK to the phone. So I can do adb-d install, and then the Kingo root I'll push over first, okay? And if you get this connection, if it's saying that it's it's transferring, then that's very good, right? That means that it's actually going through. Okay, so what just happened, um, which it didn't happen the first time I installed this actually, so a vast uh, antivirus just flagged this on the phone. So um, apparently a vast updated its its signatures. Um, and whenever I installed this, then the first time uh, it failed because the antivirus on the phone caught it. All right. Um, the next time I gave it permission, uh, I gave it permission to install um, and then it installed successfully. So let me just check the phone real quick. Yeah, so it's at least running. We'll see if we we'll see if we can actually root the device later. Um, okay, so now I have that. Uh, now I need to install. Uh, sorry, adb d install uh, busybox busybox apk, and that should push everything over. And hopefully that's not a virus, or it's not detected as a virus. Yeah, so now it's installed. Um, so I'm going to switch over to uh, the phone view. Okay, so I have the uh, phone connected actually to the network because King O Root needs a network connection. And we see our King O Root and our BusyBox free. So we know that our, our APKs have been installed. So I'm going to go ahead and click on King O Root. And um, we have Android version 4.4.2 that's detected properly. Um, it also says install recommended apps. I'm going to uncheck install recommended apps. I only want the root functionality. That's all I'm wanting. Then I click one click root. And if it was not connected to the, the network, um, it would give me an error right now and say, please connect to the network. Okay, so now it says root succeeded. Um, we need to check if it actually did succeed. So I'm going to exit out of this now. And I'm going to go to, we see super user app has been installed and this is what gives us root access. Um, 
So we still have to give permissions to all of the apps that we want to access root. Um, and then there's BusyBox free. So I'm going to click on that and we need to install it. Uh, should pop up here. Yeah. Okay. So King, Kingo super user is asking, uh, BusyBox free is asking for super user root level access. We need to allow. Um, and then it gives kind of an advertisement and then it's checking um, some software. Now it says that it's uh, BusyBox is installed, but it shouldn't be installed. So we will just call say install. Okay, so while BusyBox is uh, installing uh, the, the, the tools on the, on the device, we're gonna switch back over to um, uh, the, the computer or the, the main system. And then, um, let's see, we've, we've ran Kingo uh, root app and we've rooted the, the phone. Uh, we've installed the BusyBox app, so we're getting the, the applications installed. Now we can do, um, adb-shell to get uh, local access to the device itself. Sorry, adb-d shell. Okay, so now it says shell at t0. Um, so I know that I'm in the device now and what I want to do is um, First, I'm going to try to access a directory that I know is protected. So I'm going to do ls, which is list the, the directory listing, um, slash data. And slash data in the phone is protected. So it says uh, opened or failed, permission denied. That means that I'm not root right now. So then I want to do su or um, switch user. And then that switches me to root. And I can already see that root, uh, the root user showed up instead of shell. I get root. And then if I do ls slash data, now I get a directory listing. So this is what I want to see. Um, if I have root access, I should see all of this or be able to access it. I want to figure out which device I want to image. So I need to do cat slash proc partitions. Partitions. Okay. Now it goes through and I can see uh, all of the different partitions that are available. Which one do I actually want? Well, it looks like I probably want MMC BLK zero, and I might even want this swap. Um, so this should be basically the, the, you can say physical device um, in here. And then all of these with the P should be uh, partitions or some sort of other data structure. But if I get this MMC block zero, I should get basically everything. Okay, so now that I know uh, which device I want to image, and this is basically the, the physical disk, and all of these are, are partitions or parts of the disk. Um, now that I know which device I want to image, I need to open up another terminal on the local computer. So this is on my workstation, and this terminal is on uh, the phone. I'm, I'm remoted into the phone. Okay, and what I need to do from uh, my local computer is run the command adb forward tcp 8888 tcp 8888 okay and what this does is just sets up a connection uh, on tcp port 8888 between my computer and the phone okay um, so now that i have that set up <clears throat> i can go back into the phone um, the shell uh, shell connection in the phone um, uh, sorry i need to su and then I need to, all right, now I want to run dd if equals slash dev uh, block uh, mmc blk zero. Remember that was the physical disk in the device. And then I want to pipe that into busybox, busybox nc dash l dash p eight 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 eight. Now, what is this command doing? So we have dd if dev block uh, dev block MMC BLK zero. This basically reads the input interface for DD is MMC block zero. So it just reads the disk or reads the block device. Okay. And then we pipe that into busybox, which is running NC, which is net cat. And this is for transferring data over a network. Okay. So we're running net cat transferring some sort of data over the network and it has the dash L switch. So if it says dash L, that means that is, is listening. That means that we are making the phone listen for a connection. And the port that we are listening on is TCP 8888. 
Okay, so what we're doing here is setting up a, a Netcat connection where it's listening for a connection coming into the phone on port 8888. And whenever that connection comes in, we want to send the contents of this block device or this, this physical disk. Okay, so now I can go back to uh, my computer. Okay, so my workstation, not the phone. And I want to run NC. Uh, 127.0.0.1888, right? So netcat, uh, we're making a connection to the local host on port 8888, which remember is forwarded by ADB. So we're basically just connecting to, uh, to the phone. And whatever we get out of that, we wanna pipe that into, um, I'm gonna call it uh, Samsung uh, Note 2, uh, by.dd. Okay, so I have this Samsung Note 2 by.dd, and I'm going to save whatever the contents, whatever contents are sent to me. I'm going to save that into uh, this dd file. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter. Maybe I spoke for too long. Oh yeah, I didn't put dd yet. Okay, so I need to hit enter on the phone. Okay, so now enter on the phone, and it's waiting. I'm going to go back to my workstation and try it again. And now, because it's taking a long time, both of these are basically listening for connections. So I can see that it's going. Um, and if I switch back to, if I see the directory structure, we have now have this Samsung Note 2 BY. And if I look at the size of it, uh, I've already copied down 135 meg. And if I do refresh, we can see that the data is copying down. Okay, so now I'm making an image of the physical disk of the phone using DD. So I'm going to let that run, and whenever it's finished, uh, I'll show you uh, very basically how to clean up uh, the phone once you're finished. Okay, now that uh, imaging is finished, uh, if we look both sides, basically the, the connection uh, stopped, and we got this disk image uh, that's about 19.6 gig, which is about right for our internal storage uh, on this phone. Uh, next, what we have to do to, to finish up is go back into BusyBox, and whenever you open up the BusyBox app on the phone, there's a button to uninstall the tools. Whenever you uninstall it, um, then you can remove the app. So once it uninstalls all the utilities, you can, un uh, you can remove the app, and then go into um, uh, Kingo Root, and you can, uh, if you go into the settings menu, you can remove root access and then uninstall the app. So the last things to do are basically to remove the tools that you installed and remove root and then uninstall both of those applications from the, from the device. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, that gives us a physical disk image. And in another video, I'll show how to analyze the disk image. Thank you very much. If you like this video, please subscribe for more.